Hello, my name is Johannes and uh, I'll finally be making another tutorial for you guys because it's been requested quite a lot. So yeah, let's get started. Today I thought I would talk about stick construction and running. It's basically the same thing that Jan talked about in his first tutorial. But yeah, you guys have been requesting even this as a tutorial so I'll just get started. First I'll talk about the body parts for a stick figure and as a stick figure well it's made of lines of course but yeah you have to th think about different parts for your stick figure even if it's just lines. First you have the torso start object drawing. You have the torso, you have the upper part of the leg, I don't know what it's called. So you have that, and you have the knee where it bends, and you have the foot for both legs. I'll make it a bit cleaner. Like that. And then you have the arms upper arm and lower arm and then you have the head personally I make the head on its own layer because it's easier to animate later on I'll show you why when I get there there you have the head pretty small but whatever so yeah, the, that's the body parts, and they have to remain consistent throughout the animation. Otherwise, it's it will be it'll look weird as he changes size. We call it resizing, and it's a common mistake when you make stick figure animations. Next up, I have guides. There are different types of guides when you animate. Uh, I'm gonna bring up two different ones. The one I usually use is regular guidelines where I make one line for the height of his hip like that. It's about there. And then I copy that line and paste it and make one for where his neck is or his shoulder height even though they don't have shoulders but whatever so the torso is supposed to be slightly shorter than what the legs are because that's how humans look in real life and you don't need a guide for the head because the head doesn't change size if you well yeah and a different type of guides is the grid and you can open it by pressing view grid show grid and then you have this square looking background and it's a good af alternative if you're going to have a lot of aerial movements like if you he's jumping up here weird leg so you can follow the squares to make sure its body each body parts remain the same way while he's up in the air so if you feel like it's hard to remain the size when you go off these guides this is a good alternative but I rarely use the grid because I usually have a background already and it's it hides the grid I'll show you if I have this as a background it, uh, the grid doesn't show through so yeah And that's about it with the stick construction. And now we'll go into running. And first off we have I'll hide the head while I animate the body because I do body first. And I'll lock the the guides. I can turn that into a guide as well. So the guidelines doesn't show when I play the animation. 
like that. So it's a guide layer, I just double click on that symbol and turn it to a, a guide. And, whoops, as I start animating the running, I just simply free transform him a tiny bit. For first time, I do this. I select to where to how long I want the animation to be. Right click, insert frame for the for the lines, the bottom line and the guidelines, those layers. And then here I make a bunch of blank keyframes. That's where I'll be drawing the stick figure as it goes on. And I'll make the layer for the head for the same length. Sorry, I burped a bit. And then I'll increase the length of this frame so he'll be standing still for a while. And then I copy him, paste him and I tilt him a little bit and now you can't see like you've seen me animate before you wonder how do I see the previous frame I simply click onion skin or maybe that onion skin no that one so this shows like a little shadow I can move him so you see clear I see a slight shadow of where he was in the previous frame so that's how I know what I did on the last keyframe. So now you copy him again, paste him, and tilt him a little more. And now I tilted him a bit more than I did the last time. So this makes it look smooth as he goes from slow to faster and faster. So now I copy him again and tilt him a little more than the last time. So it turns into a very smooth movement. And now I'll start redrawing him. And I move him a little more than the last time. And also to make him run or even walk, he has to lean forward. He can't just stand straight and like that and then just simply lift a leg forward because he has to lean forward in order to get his force moving into that direction so that's how you get him to start running and the first step of his run shouldn't be like a big leap because he hasn't gotten a lot of speed yet so it starts off with just a little a little tiny not that tiny this is why I use um, this thing here called object drawing so if I only mess up one body part but I'm happy with the rest I can simply change that one so he makes a little skip as his first step like that and now he starts to accelerate a little more See how the distance keep increasing for each frame? That's how he ac accelerates in speed. And this is a way of getting his body to jump forward, is to launch his leg ahead of him to add some extra force to make his body launch up in the air. and launch forward and 
now his leap is a lot bigger than it was on the first leap. It was just a little skip and now it's a jump. I'm not happy with that leg. I'll try to redraw it. Not that. Like that maybe. And then he lands on a somewhat straight leg. the leg bends as he breaks the little tiny fall and he prepares for his next step like that and then you just continue from there and uh, the way I do it is I add the body and the legs first and then I get back to adding the arms rushing this a bit but I can't make this video too long my arms resize a bit at times but see that looks decent the way you can do it from here is just copy from the earlier frames and continue the run loop like this so you won't have to redraw him every time and then the w why I added the head on a different layer is I can just use the this tool, what's it called? Selection tool. And I select it so there's a blue square around it. I click on the layer and I press F6 and then I just move the head with my arrow keys. It's a really fast way to add the head. see why it's so slow now it's because it's 12 frames per second I didn't change the frame rate yet yet so you go here double click on frame rate FPS it says and you change this to I usually use 30 but that might be a bit fast for the way I animated this so I choose 24 most animators use somewhat like that click OK and I'll just remove these frames and then there you have it so yeah that's it for this tutorial I hope you liked it you can leave suggestions for what I should make a tutorial about next and I do have some suggestions already and yeah please subscribe and like this and 
yeah thank you for watching and bye